Backrooms is made up of liminal spaces that you can explore forever if you make it that long. Through these liminal spaces, through these empty halls, these expanding labyrinths, these nostalgic places, there are several rules and regulations that you should follow if you want to stay alive. From not touching the clouds, to not smelling the flowers, to not drinking any tea if you're offered it, these are 15 secret backrooms rules that you need to follow if you want to live. If you want to hear more rules like this and you want a part two, leave a like if you do end up enjoying the video, but don't if you don't. Only leave a like if you enjoyed it. If this video gets 7,000 likes, I'll do another part two to this. Anyways, without further talking, let's get into this video and let's see these 15 rules. The way I wanna structure this video is I wanna start with rules and guidelines that are more well known, that make more common sense. And then as we move further down to the higher numbers, I'm gonna be going over some rules that you definitely haven't heard of and that you wouldn't really think of until you watch the video. None of these are like obvious either. None of them are like drink almond water or don't drink liquid pain. Like these are rules that you actually have to think of. So that leads us to rule number one that says when you're inside of a backroom's level and you hear your name being called, do not follow the voice. It's not uncommon if you're deep inside the labyrinths of the back rooms that you might hear auditory hallucinations. Whether you're on level zero or level 500, you might be slipping with your sanity and you might start hearing things. So if you hear your name being called off in the distance and you think it's somebody you know calling your name, do not approach the noise at all. Do not follow the noise, any of that, because the likelihood is it's an auditory hallucination or an entity that's trying to mimic human behavior and eats you. So unless you want to be eaten by an entity, don't follow the voice. Number two, never attempt to escape the back rooms. Now, at first, this might seem kind of weird to you. You might be thinking to yourself, isn't the entire goal of being stuck in the back rooms to try to escape? No. You, you can't, there's, there's no escape. Because looking for an escape, trying to find an exit or going to levels that people say there's exits on, these often lead to your death sentence. It's often the end of the line. Most of these so-called exits to the back rooms are false. They're fake, they're not real, they're pranks, bro. And the likelihood is you'll probably just get led deeper and deeper into the complex and lose your mind. Just a general rule of thumb in the back rooms is when you try to do something, usually the opposite's gonna happen. So if you try to escape, you're probably just gonna get stuck even further in. Number three, do not touch any wall that's darker than the walls around it. So when you're in a level of the back rooms after a certain amount of time, you will undoubtedly come into contact with a wall or a floor or a ceiling or something that's darker and out of place than the objects around it. It just looks like it's not supposed to be there. Usually these darker surfaces, these glitchy areas, mean that that object is unstable. It's not stable at a molecular level. And if you touched that out of place, darker or glitchy wall, you will likely no clip through the wall. And if you know anything about no clipping, you can't really tell where you're going to go. Sometimes clipping sends you to specific levels. Other times it sends you to the void and other times it sends you to levels that no one's even heard of. So it's really hard to say and it's just really good guidance to never touch dark or out of place walls at all to avoid this. Number four, Never trust or look at people that you find in the back rooms. Now, if you somehow get lucky or unlucky enough to run into somebody that you think is another person on your journey through the back rooms, first of all, try to make sure they're a human and never fully trust them ever. Many entities attempt to mimic human behavior and many humans are evil or insane because they've been here for so long. So you should never trust another person at all. If you wanna make sure the thing you run into that you believe is a human is indeed a person, you need to ask them questions about real life, like specific things. Ask them who the last president of the US was. Ask them to name all seven countries in the world. Ask them only questions that people from reality would know. Now, to be fair, if the person's just dumb, they might not know the questions, but you can try. You know what I'm saying? It's better to be safe than to be dead. So those are the more common rules that you might already know of. Those are probably pretty simple to most of you, but now we're going to get into some more obscure rules that might make your journey way better or could make it way worse if you don't follow them. So let's get into those now. Always check the time in the back rooms and always count in your head the seconds that go by. This is so important because when you're inside of the confines of the back rooms, time is dead and meaning has no meaning. If you get that reference, leave a like. So in order for you to keep a sliver of your sanity, of, of normalcy, 
you need to be able to keep time that way you can follow a sleeping pattern and eating pattern and kind of keep your routine even though you're in this timeless area the way to do that is either by having a watch on your wrist or a phone that's charged or something or you can count the seconds to go by in your head counting the seconds can make you not go crazy because it'll keep your mind focused on something and it's a good way to just keep up of how long you're traveling and how long you're doing things because if you don't do that if you don't keep up with the time you could just wander for days and days and forget to eat forget to drink it could be a whole bad thing you know rule number six every single day that you wake up in the back rooms recite your name your family's name your hobbies and other things about your personal life this one might seem pretty weird to you off the bat like why would you need to be reciting and repeating these things out loud but it's for a very important reason in the back rooms you could go days or weeks without seeing anybody at all any light or any signs of normalcy and those conditions will make the human brain go pretty crazy pretty fast and if you forget who you are then you won't even have any touch and any control over your own body so in order to remember who you are and remember what you're about remember what you like remember your family when you wake up in the morning repeat your name out loud repeat your family members names repeat what they like to do repeat what you like to do that way you kind of keep this contained box of your own self that way it's harder for your sanity to go bye bye you know the first part of going insane is forgetting your name and forgetting your memories so Try to avoid that by doing what I just said. Rule number seven, never sniff the flowers in the fields. So this rule is for levels that take place outside and it's just a good thing to stick by. If these outdoor levels have blooming flowers that look so, you know, pretty and they smell good, never ever get close to them and sniff the petals or the center of them. You'll probably be tempted to smell the flowers because they have like a alluring property. They're kind of addictive to look at. This is all because some flowers on these levels emit these hallucinogens that make you see things, that make you kind of loopy, that make you forget about time. And the more you smell that toxin, the more it emits in your nose, the least sane you'll be. And if you keep on smelling them over and over, you'll just collapse and fall over and be consumed by the level, which that does not sound fun at all. So don't do that. Many of these levels with flowers have this aroma throughout the entire thing that just gives you this feeling of exuberance and effervescence. And you just have to avoid smelling that. Try to get out as fast as possible, no matter how good it seems. Rule number eight, blood runs red, they're not dead. Blood runs clear, don't get near. One entity that you might come across in your journey through the back rooms is known as the skin stealer. This is a very dangerous creature, and it's really hard to tell what a skin stealer is from a human. They look very similar, especially from far distances. Because these entities drape human flesh all over their own body, and from a distance away, and even up close, it just seems like you're looking at a person, because they have real skin on them. Of course, they are not humans, and they will do anything to kill and flay you, and put your body on theirs. So to avoid that, there's only one way. See, human's blood is red. So if you prick your finger and you, you drop some blood on it, you will see red. If you meet somebody who you think is maybe not a human and might be a skin stealer, ask them to prick their finger to prove that they have red blood. You see, because skin stealers have clear blood and it's all completely clear. You can't see any red at all. If the person refuses to prick their finger, or if they do so and it's clear, do not get closer to that person. Run away as fast as you can. They're gonna betray you, and they're gonna wear your skin like a trophy. So don't do that. The blood runs red, then you're not dead. If the blood runs clear, do not get near. Rule number nine. Do not sleep on the floor on odd numbered levels. So this is a phenomenon that occurs in the back rooms that relates to an entity known as Pinhead. If you're on an odd numbered level, like one, three, five, seven, and so on, and you go to sleep directly on the floor of that level with nothing in between you and the floor, an entity known as Pinhead can infiltrate your subconscious and your dreams while you sleep. If Pinhead enters your consciousness, he can trap your soul inside of your dream, and it'll cause you to not be able to move or go back to being awake. Essentially, he kind of knocks you out from the inside, and your body will just be laying there on the floor, withering away and decaying and becoming weak. And after a few days, when you couldn't physically defend yourself, Pinhead will get out of your mind, pop out into reality, and consume your flesh right there. This is only known to happen on odd numbered levels, and there is a way to avoid it. First of all, just don't sleep at all on odd numbered levels if you can help it. But if you do, make sure you sleep on a table, or at least put a sleeping bag or something between you and the floor. That way, Pinhead cannot infiltrate your dreams and can Assume you. Rule number 10. If you see a man with no face, just keep walking. 
Throughout the history of the backrooms, there have been a ton of reports of a tall, skinny, humanoid male figure with no face. It's unknown what the entity is, what species it is, why it's there, but it just looks like a tall, shadowy person. Never ever look up at this man's face though, because it's said that the horrors that you see from doing so are unimaginable and you can't get them out of your mind. It's still unknown what people actually see when they look into the man's face, but if they say it's that bad, I'm gonna trust them. Whatever it is tends to put people into this catatonic state for a temporary amount of time. Rule number 11, if you see a cloud that's not moving in the sky, get indoors and keep your head down. Now the sky parts of backrooms levels are often very creepy and enigmatic. Many of them aren't even real. They don't have actual clouds or a sun or anything. They kind of look like 2D printed bad video game graphics. And if you find yourself on an outdoor level where the clouds are not moving or there are clouds that are moving and one cloud is not, you need to get inside and hide from it because that is the level watching you. You're being stalked through that cloud. Looking up at the clouds for a long period of time will give you this kind of hallucinatory state and you'll be like loopy and unable to respond to stimuli and eventually you'll kind of just lose control of your body. And the cloud that's stopped in the sky watching you is the level's version of kind of following you around and keeping tabs on you. So if you see cloud like that, get out of that level as soon as possible. Rule number 12. If someone or something offers you tea, do not drink it. On random deeper levels in the complex of the back rooms, the people you meet, the spaces you go, the things you think all become blurred together and it makes less and less sense the longer you're inside of it. And the line between reality and fiction becomes blurrier and blurrier. So if you end up deep inside a level and you find yourself in a situation where you're being offered tea to drink, never ever take it. Never drink it, never pour it, never look at it, politely decline and get out of that level as fast as possible. This tea will heighten your paranoia, it'll make you jittery, it'll cause you to hallucinate things, and it'll essentially crumble your mind from the inside. Or so people say, do not drink the tea. Rule number 13, if you're inside of a house that has windows, never approach or look outside of the windows. So most of the time in the back rooms, if you're in a level where there's a house or a building that has windows in the side and you look outside, there will be nothing. Sometimes it's blank black, or sometimes it's a fake window, and sometimes there's just nothing there. But rarely, some houses and some buildings do have windows that look outside to these expanses of grass, these hills, or something like that. These landscapes often are intriguing, and you want to go look at them, you want to open the window up, you want to go explore them. But never under any circumstance should you do that. By simply approaching the window, you might get accidentally no clipped through that window to the outside area beyond it, and you could be stuck in that area. Think of it like the background of an I Spy book, where there's just nothing back there except the expanse. You can't get back and you don't know how you even got there. The window also could be a window entity trying to lure you closer to it and then consume you. But possibly more terrifyingly is when the back rooms displays something you recognize outside of a window. It could be your childhood house, it could be your childhood school, it could be something from your regular normal life. The backrooms is known to play with people's psychology, and it does that sometimes. No matter how intriguing whatever is behind the window is, do not approach the window. If you see a window with something outside of it, look the opposite way and walk fastly past it. Rule number 14. If you get to the end, do not type your name into the computer. So the end library of the back rooms is a very mystical and almost mythical place in the lore now. It's kind of a level that people adventure to get to when they're stuck, almost as like a last hurrah, a sort of rite of passage. It's known for how creepy it is, how unsettling it is, and just how weird it looks. Its most famous feature is its CRT computer that is there at the checkout desk. You can interact with this computer, you can type into its chat box, and you can do a list of things that might have different outcomes. You might get sent to a different level, you might delete things, you might spawn in things. But whatever you do, never type your actual name in at all. If you type your first, middle, and last name into this computer and press enter on the keyboard, your entire life will flash before you on the screen. The images that will show will be from every single event and moment in your life from birth until now. This will include images of your friends and family before and after 
your disappearance into the back rooms. It'll show pictures of them mourning you and looking for you and trying to find out where you went, where you got to, and why you left them. This experience is said to traumatize everybody that goes through it. I mean, it flashes your entire life right before your eyes after you've spent what feels like decades inside the back rooms. You'll see your friends and the family that you love on pictures, but you won't be able to interact with them, you won't be able to be with them, all you can see is just grainy images flashing before your eyes. And the worst part, of course, is the pictures after you went missing in the back rooms of them looking for you and being sad for you. Never type your name in the end computer. Finally for this video, rule number 15, never skip a stair on the end staircase. If you forgot what the end level is, it's the most popular video on this channel, and the level number is... Stay with me now. Level 922-3372-036-854-77-5807. So if you find yourself on this staircase that goes up and down infinitely, the spiral staircase, never skip over a stair. Go in order and make sure you hit every single one of them. If you do skip a stair, you will not be able to get up to the top and escape. You will instead get sent back to level zero to start over again and have to redo the entire back rooms. It's as if the level considers it cheating to skip over just one stair. And as punishment, you'll get sent back to the very beginning to make your way all the way here to the nine quintillionth level. But then again, we don't even know if the actual exit is at the top of the stairs like people say. We have no idea. But if you make it all the way there, you might as well try and give it your best shot to not skip a stair. Also, never jump off the staircase at all both have the same fate and you'll get sent back to the beginning. Those are 15 rules that you need to follow in the back rooms. You might not have heard of any of these rules. You might have heard of some of them. I'd really love to do more of this kind of stuff. I really hope you enjoyed as well. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all you do. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I thought it was a really cool concept of a video to make. And if you, if you do want more, I would be glad to do so. Just leave a like and let me know in the comments if you do want more. I'm trying a bunch of new things on the channel. Just trying a bunch of new uh, rebranding and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for all you do. Love and appreciate you all. Peace and love. Bye-bye.